And I'm assuming everybody's already familiar with CES and what it is. I know he is. <laughs> it's the, the uh, world's largest consumer electronics trade show. Um, there's, there are more people at the convention than live in my city, <laughs> in Lawrence. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, a, a crazy, crazy crowded convention. And then this year they expanded to be not only the convention center and the Venetian Hotel, but then they were also um, in a couple of other hotels. And then there's always these side events that are, that are at all the nearby hotels. It, it was just massive and crowded. Um, but it's always really fun, so I like to go, because I, I like to see what's going to happen in coming years. So this year, I think there was less of a, a wow factor. There wasn't like some fantastic big thing that, that got rolled out. Um, I suppose the, the fantastic big thing that got rolled out was uh, um, glasses-free 3D TV. Um, so so you, you can go in this summer, I think, they're going to roll them out from, from Hisense, and you can buy a TV that d displays 3D without needing glasses for it. But I was underwhelmed. <laughs> um, and that's, that's because I'd seen this technology for three years going to, to CESs, and I, 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 I saw the company that was building it up. And the version I saw <laughs> last year was actually better than the version I saw that they were released. You know, and I asked them about it. I'm like, well, what gives? And, 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 and the deal is, when you're looking at the TV, if you like, move your head at all, you get this weird wavy effect. It's just it's very strange. And I'm like, you know, what gives? I didn't see that last year. And they said, well, we upped the resolution. Because now, now it does the, the 4K resolution, which is, which is bigger than a, an, an HD TV. And that was something that a lot of companies were pushing is this 4K resolution TV. Uh, but uh, uh, the wavy thing happened. And I don't think it was a good trade-off. <laughs> you know, I think people would rather see. And then also, I think that, that the 3D TV thing in general is finally dying down. Um, I went to Sony's big announcement, and they didn't mention 3D anything, not once. Um, you know, in previous years, they'd been like, oh, we're going to do 3D this, 3D that. And, you know, and this year they were, they were talking about their 4K and higher resolution, but not 3D at all. Um, and I, I think the, a lot of companies were like that. They were just kind of, you know, LG was still had a huge 3D display with glasses. Um, but most of the companies realized that that's not something that everybody really wants, <laughs> you know, or needs or is going to specifically go out and buy a TV to get. Um, but uh, this year, uh, I did see a lot of uh, um, trends coming, um, and probably the biggest trend was sensors in everything. Um, you know, sensors have been around for a while, um, but they've gotten to the point where they're, where they're cheap and easy enough to make that you can put them in anything, and you can use them in things that you wouldn't uh, think of as, as uh, conventional uses for sensors. sensors. Sensors to any, you know, temperature sensors, walking sensors, uh, um, sensors for, for moisture, for, for, you know, motion, you know, all of the, the technology you can fit in your phone, you can fit in other devices that aren't necessarily phones or, or really CPU intensive. What did they use? Um, well, there was one company, I, I think I might have a picture of it coming up, that has a new product coming out called the Flower Power. And it's a sensor that is, is waterproof and weatherproof that you stick in your garden. And then you have an app on your, on your iPad that says you know, where, where you're located and what type of plant you're trying to grow. It senses the moisture and the temperature to tell you how to care for that plant for optimal care. I mean, that's a really, yeah, that's really useful and really clever. And it's something you couldn't do until sensors became cheap enough and, and easy enough to to get down to, to something. I think they were wanting to sell it for like $70. So that's still a little higher, but you know, wait till next year, it'll be 35. On the iPad part? Well, that one, I, I think that they just had iPad as the announcement for the app, but I'm sure that they'll do Android as, as a version too. I mean, that's, that's pretty common. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing continuation of phones as the center of the universe instead of computers. Um, a lot of these sensors are things that hook into a phone um, or interact with a phone or tablet or mobile device um, as opposed to, you know, a big desktop computer, um, you know, such as the, the, the flower power that's, that's going iPad, iPhone. Um, 
and instead of big computer to, to go and, and check on your garden. Um, they had, uh, I think I'm gonna have another picture of it, a, a pulse ox to, to sense oxygen that hooked into an iPhone. <laughs> you know? um, and well, think about how, how cool that is, that, that you can do that uh, uh, emergency checking from some place that you wouldn't have to have a big wad of, of huge expensive medical equipment. Now that's something that you can carry in your pocket and check. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was, um, and then and then there's a lot of a lot of uh, you know apps. I mean apps are still a big thing, but hackability is is coming into play. That that people are announcing. Well, yes, and you can hack this. Yes, and we've opened this up. Yes, we've released this. In fact, uh, uh, two cars um, released that 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 they were open sourcing the dashboard. For, so that you could make dashboard apps that would that would um, converge with your mobile phone and your and your car dashboard, um, you know, control radio stations or you know, give you weather, you know, navigation or whatever. That they were just opening that up and saying, here, develop. Um, the speed so that you can check with your kids. Yes, actually, there were there were uh, several companies. Uh, there's an open standard for cars. Um, that that uh, there's like a plug-in device for cars that were made after 2000 um, that they they've got. Um, Progressive is starting to, to you, they're they're trying to, to to hype these things that you can put them in and and they're going to sense how well you drive and determine your insurance rates on on you know how how heavy you are on the brakes or whatever. <laughs> well, you can also get one to monitor your teens driving. So, <laughs> you know, personally, I would rather have the car do the driving for me. Um, <laughs> You know? <laughs> uh, but there's that you know, and, and a lot of this it's it's a convergence of things that have already existed, and now they're just putting them together. Um, on the health and fitness, there was an entire section of the floor just dedicated to pedometers and varieties of pedometers. Um, you know, and and it's more than just pedometers when it comes to that, like the the, the Fitbit, which is a, a teeny tiny little monitor that you can wear um, that senses not only not only the steps, but uh, uh, whether or not you're going upstairs versus, you know, versus regular steps, and and uh, sends the the data to your phone, um, so that you can monitor your progress. It's open and hackable that 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 they have it opened up so that other apps can take advantage of that, so you can use it with your with your other fitness apps. And there were a whole bunch of them. Um, I've got one. Um, this one is the Fitbug, which is it's a little bit bigger, I think. Um, than a lot of the others, but you know they gave it to me. So, uh, <laughs> you know. um, but uh, you know it's the same same thing that it sends it sends it to your to your iPhone or, or iPad. They don't have Android yet, um, and uh, tells them how how much you've been walking, and you can you can send the, the data to other things. Um, they had a contest that they gave those out, and they they had a contest to walk a marathon. Um, so I didn't get one until. A day and a half into to, to arriving in Las Vegas, and uh, I walked 48 miles after that. So, <laughs> so a lot of walking. I shopped for you know the pedometers, and to find one that will fit on all your clothes and not fall yeah. off is yeah, the, problematic. I, I, well, I, I think this one does a pretty good job with that because it's got a strap that, that uh, pins on so that you get that on, on your belt buckle and then at the same time it's got this thing. So that's not too bad. But yeah, that is a huge problem is that it falls off. Uh, mine's pinned. I've got a safety pin under the little <laughs> buckle in the back because it's the only way, you know, when I'm like going to the restroom or something that it doesn't end up on the floor. Yeah, um, the Fitbit now has one that, that doesn't have any sort of clips in it, but it fits inside a bracelet, so then you just wear it on your wrist. Hmm. So. Just distinguish between just like me here and tapping the keyboard and like walking. I, it, this, the pattern is different. Like if you're, if you're typing like that, you're, you're doing like lots of small shaking versus walking, you've got a stride and it probably senses a pattern of that. That's pretty heavy technology there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and, and, and it's something that we wouldn't have had just a couple of years ago, and there was there was a company I talked to that had uh, uh, that was just making uh, uh, these pedometers for kids uh, that they that they 
had them for kids so that with tied to a, a, a game thing so that kids could monitor how they were doing it and then parents could buy incentives that then they could they could earn with with exercise and I said well what's to stop them from just shaking the device and 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 uh, cheating that way and they said well actually you know we, we sense the patterns and and uh, you know we, we uh, you know, get that, that there's a regular rhythm to, 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 to kid walking within, within a certain variation, and we can tell the difference between a kid walking and a dog walking so they can't put it on the dog's collar and have it cheat that way. <laughs> um, and and uh, there, there are a lot of uh, batteries. Charging is a big thing. Is, uh, um, inductive charging is, is uh, there, there isn't, you know, key... Uh, 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 the 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 uh, uh, actually I think it's pronounced qi it's q i um, charging is is one standard that's trying to to achieve dominance but there are also some other standards because it's got a few disadvantages um, but inductive charging is huge and that's going to be you know I expect within the next couple of years we'll think it would be strange to have to plug in a phone or other device in order to charge it oh, that you just put it on the charging pad and then it charges. Right, right, uh, and they had a lot of different models of charging pads or, or cases that charge. Are they, um, are they doing good with batteries and making their lives longer? They they are doing better with that. Um, there was also there was also a lot of thrust towards uh, um, solar charging, um, you know, green sources, and uh, you know, in light of of uh, you know the recent hurricane, there was also a lot of, you know, winding chargers and things like that. Um, it, it became a huge <laughs> issue to not be able to, to get electricity <laughs> conventionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and home automation was, they're were, they were still trying to move towards a standard for that, but there were a lot of, of companies that were definitely trying for that. Uh, things like uh, light bulbs that had uh, Wi-Fi sensors in it so that you could use apps to uh, control from the light bulb itself, not from the switch. The light bulb itself would switch off and on so that you didn't have to, to uh, rework your entire home electricity system in order to be able to, to use automation. And uh, that, that's finally getting somewhere. Um, you know, and like I talked about earlier, the 3D, I think that's going away. Uh, 4K is still, they want to hype that. And I tell you, it does look good when you compare HDTV and 4K, but Nobody has a bunch of movies out there with with a uh, 4K, <laughs> you know. You, What's you know, 4K um, it's it's uh, bigger than than Blu-ray, so you'd have to have special 4K Blu-ray. You'd have to, you know, you'd have to have, and it's probably at this point we're talking about streaming. Mm -hmm. We can get down to it, um, and they still haven't figured out a good smart TV system, although they keep trying, uh, and that. Uh, um, you know, TVs are dumb. They, they watch whatever happens to be on at the time that it's broadcast. Uh, and most of the time, if you want to do something other than that, then they rely on the TV itself to record it, like with a TiVo or some other device. DVR. Right, right. With, with a DVR, you're, you're, relying, you're relying on your connection to the broadcast in order to be able to do it. If, if your cable goes out in the middle of a broadcast, you can't watch the show, even though you legitimately have purchased that, you know, access to that show, you can't watch it later because your cable went out. <coughs> and, uh, uh, you know, d systems like, like Hulu and Netflix, um, eventually that's where <laughs> we're going to get it all. You know, when, when cable companies stop having quite a grip on that, uh, we're going to be able to say, no, I want to watch what I want to watch, and you should know what I want to watch because you know me and you know what I've watched before. Yeah, because now with Netflix and Hulu, you still, if you want to watch it on your TV, you have yeah, yeah. So they're trying to do what? Better? So they're trying to have TVs that are kind of a bridge between the two, so that you get your cable, um, but you also get Hulu Plus or or Netflix from the same from the same TV device. Uh, they're trying to sell TVs that have it all integrated. Although I don't know if that's going to go over as well as set top players that that uh, are upgradable that have that. Well, but how are they going to get by? Because you're still constrained by your cable, so they're going to have like. Wi-Fi hub? Uh, well, you know, I gave up my cable long ago. I, 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 you know, the only TV I get comes from the internet. Well, um, but you're still so, using a connection that comes from your cable, even if you give yeah, up I your still, cable. Yeah, I still, yeah, I still have Wi-Fi, but I, that internet connection. 
Yeah, I'm still dealing with an internet connection, although it wouldn't necessarily be a cable internet connection. Um, you know, but, but yeah, so it's still one way or another. It's just a matter of how it's broadcast out and how you, how you select it. So, Maria, you're talking about the smart TVs. So, you know, Google TV and Apple TV right. are out there. What are, what are they doing? Well, Does they're not, do they're not, yeah, they do exist. Apple doesn't show up at CES. Oh, uh, really? They are too special. <laughs> they, they, they make their own little news, even though lots of people make accessories for them, which, by the way, is a point of frustration for a lot of vendors because Apple, um, with the, with the uh, um, iPhone, the, the newest version of it, uh, I can't remember, like the iPhone 5, is that mm -hmm. what the newest one? And, and the newest I, iPads, they changed the connection Right, and you can only make that connection if you partner with Apple and give them a chunk of your, your accessory making money uh, in order to do that. So there were a lot of very unhappy vendors that have been you know, making Apple accessories yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, that aside, you know, the Apple TV is just a set-top thing at this point. It's been rumored that they're gonna have a TV integrated device for ages, but they have not announced anything. Um, and they won't announce anything until they just make a big announcement about it. Um, Google TV has been trying to gain market share, but kind of half-heartedly. Um, they they'd partnered with Sony last year. Sony didn't announce anything about Google TV this year. <laughs> kind of quietly yeah. swept it under. Um, there were a couple of other companies that did have Google TVs, um, <coughs> but it's it's also a standard that really hasn't taken off. That could it could be a standard, but you know. I, I think companies at this point, they want to claim ownership of, of this is our interface and how we do it and everybody wants it because we're that brand and they don't want to rely on somebody else's technology or even if they're giving it away for free like, like uh, Google is. Well, if Apple's saying that connection won't be there, do you see the iPads that protesting too? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that they're going to be gripey about it too. I mean, I, I would if I bought a, a new app, you know, app, you know, iPad and said, wait a minute, I can't use any of my old connections, but I think there's still enough people that when they buy an iPad, it's their first iPad, so they're not noticing the problem yet. Yeah, so you know, it's the upgraders that are going to be like, you know, this is dumb. I think that will put them, to be honest, that will put them in the, the realm of all the other, uh, the Android things. One of the reasons I went to an iPhone this time and gave up my Android was because I wanted a lot of those other devices around the house so that I could have portability. My clock radio, my kids' radio, the stereo, all have these. I, so now I have an iPhone that plugs right in. And I did that specifically for those devices. Now I have all those accessories. And, and, and if you upgrade, I then you won't no be able to plug them in. Yeah, no yeah. no motivation to go to an iPhone 5 unless <coughs> I go to an Android. Right, right, right. Whereas, whereas Android is, is most of those devices center around micro USB, which is center, open, yep, yep, and yep. and uh, so yeah. The the reason why why device manufacturers didn't want to make Android accessories for a long time is because there's not a standard yeah. size. Yeah. There's a standard connection, but not a standard size. So you you have to make a lot of them to make cases and things like that because, you know, although Android is outselling iPhone in aggregate not by individual device. <laughs> so if you're a company and you gotta choose, do I choose the one that I can sell 20 of right away or do I choose the one that I can sell 10 of this kind and then 10 of this kind and 10 of this kind? And, right. you know, right. so, so we'll see how that plays out. Now 4K, I'm sorry, I wanted to just go back. Oh. Is that just a greater resolution? Is that what you're saying? You yes, yes, that's, that's yeah, that's what it is, is it's, it's 4,000 across as opposed to 1280 okay. so yeah it's it's bigger because I've already when I go into Best Buy now you see some of the really high res I, yeah. I see them show movies and I think gosh that's too realistic because I'm looking at, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at gorgeous actors and actresses and seeing and seeing their zits like yeah <laughs> and seeing the makeup on yeah 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 and I think that's what are we, you know that's become a problem with HD in the first place yeah yeah, yeah. so because I mean you know more I'm like if Cindy Crawford doesn't look good, well, you've gone too far. Yeah. You know? Do you want to <laughs> see the nose hair? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and that's, that's going to be a debate all along, yeah. Um, so Google Glasses were rumored to be around. This is not Google Glasses. This is a guy with a different technology, and there were a couple of competing things going on. So what he's got there is he's got a display that he can see out of one eye there. 
um, and and it's you know wrapped around his head there so that he can see it. Uh, and he was he was going around filming stuff um, with a with a little yeah yeah. <laughs> it was it was kind of kind of crazy and, and cyborgish, um, but but at the same time really cool. And that's that's you know existing technology right now. So so the the idea of the Google glasses is not that far fetched at all. Um, there was another company that that uh, uh, had a a uh, glasses display, but theirs required that you wear contacts and then had their display, and it somehow it was shining on your contacts. I'm like oh, that's just kind of kind of strange. But uh, uh, they they claimed that it was better resolution and, and worked better than than this one. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it sorts out. Is Google there showing their glasses. Google was there, but they don't have space out. They have they have private <coughs> space and only do like like private meetings. Like they they, they talk to individual vendors and companies and stuff. Uh, so there there were there were people from Google that had. Google glasses on that were just wandering around. Yeah, they, they've been field testing that for a while. Which, speaking of which, what he was standing in front of um, was was uh, this is a, a Velodyne was the the company um, that had a lidar car, and it's their technology that's used in things like the uh, um, robotic driving cars that, that Google makes. Um, so. Up there is the, the LiDAR detector. They had a monitor over here so that you could see what it looked like. Um, and uh, that's, that's what enables the car to, to see and make decisions about how to steer. So that's coming. But you know, that was when I asked them about it. They're, they're like, you know, it's about 10 years or more down the line before you can actually go out and buy one yourself. Yeah. In California right now, there are cars that can drive by themselves legally. <laughs> um, they changed the law in California and I think uh, um, Nevada too uh, to allow driverless cars as long as there's somebody in the driver's seat. They don't have to be actively steering. Uh, but they have uh, uh, Google has cars out that that can drive on the highway at full speeds with other traffic around it. Um, and the only wrecks that that car that, that car has been in is uh, when the when the actual driver was at the wheel, <laughs> or when uh, when other people have hit the car. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a craziness. My computer crashes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm like, bring it on. <coughs> well, you'd be nice. I just don't know whether I'd trust it. So that's why somebody has to be behind the wheel to to allow it to. To go right now, but you know, if all of the cars are communicating with each other and robotically steered, then you don't have to, to worry about that. You can actually have more cars on the highway at once because they're they're controlled in unison and not acting irrationally. I don't know. Yeah. You don't want to do that, Dave. Clear it can just <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have any of you seen that or experienced that? Not in real life. I've seen it on the TV. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see how well they do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I I I I think there was one that went viral about a car that parallel parked and then crashed when it was doing that. So I don't know how well they do on that. But uh, yeah, I mean, and that's that's the way it's going to happen. First is little pieces of that, the, the parallel parking or the the. Uh, you know, beepers and, and buzzers that there's somebody in your zone, you need to, you need to back up or whatever. That's going to happen first, and then eventually they're just going to drive and you're not going to have to worry about it. Right, it's like the cars, right? So much, you know, the backup cameras that more and more cars are having. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, and that, that's huge. I mean, especially if you've got a big old car there. I mean, you know, you want to be able to see if there's like a little kid behind you or, you know, that you cannot physically see from the mirror. Um, so, this I thought won won the the simple but clever <laughs> device award for me, um, and I, I've got one that they that I'm not giving away because everybody in my house is fighting over these, um, and uh, um, what it's called is the the uh, cord cruncher, and what it is is it's you can pull out your your uh, headphones and you listen to your your thing there, 
Uh, and then when you're done, you just pull it up and it will never tangle. See, simple and, and you know, why didn't somebody think of this before? They've got something like that for hoses that I want to buy that they've been having. So, and then on top of that, you know, you can, you can twist it up and then, and then just put it on your wrist to give, they, they, they tried to sell this as, and then it becomes a hip bracelet. And I'm like, I don't know if I'd go so far as hip, but it becomes a handy way to carry it. You know? How much is it? 30 bucks. Um, online, so if you Google cord cruncher, mm -hmm. they probably have them in stores after that, but I think they have them online right now. Um, I, I think black is the only non-neon color they have right now, but... Uh, mm -hmm. I, not bad. I mean, they're not, they're not the, the, the high definition, super high quality headphones, but you know, if you want something that you're not going to get the cords all tangled in, you, then... Does the cord itself have stretch in it there somehow? Or? Because it, it, it appears that you stretched it longer than it Yeah, yeah so this is just a, 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 a rubber tube, essentially. So, okay. so then your, your cord is, is uh, you know, your cables for your headphone are stuffed in there. And, oh, then, okay. and then because it's a rubber tube, when you stretch it back up, then oh, it just okay. gathers it right in. So, the so it's, are it's like, yeah. Not stretching, just, the container. just the container around it, like, oh, okay. like a balloon. Okay. <laughs> the cables obviously kind of fold down or Right, right, right. They just kind of shrivel up into that, and then, but they don't tangle. And it's not thirty; it's twenty-four ninety-nine. There you go, and it comes with Ginsu knives. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's that's well, that is the company of Core Cruncher. So yeah. Wow, there you go. <laughs> so, but on top of headphones, um, wanted to talk about another couple of, of uh, things that happen with headphones. Um, and that is, there were, there were three companies, I don't have any examples of those, but there were three companies that had um, headphones that, they were big over-the-ear headphones that vibrated with the bass. Like, it had a separate specific you know haptic feedback module that that was in there so sony um skull candy and um able planet were the three that that, that i saw and i'm sure that there were more companies so that had not going deaf fast enough well no 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 actually actually quite the opposite <coughs> because it vibrates with the bass that means you can turn it down and you don't have to have it up as high to to hear the bass because it's vibrating against you know, you get the, the seat rumble effect, as it were. So you can have it down lower, and you can still hear the, the, the high notes better because the bass is, you know, it overwhelms high notes when you're, when you're listening to things anyway, um, which I thought was really clever. And then Able Planet is taking it even further, and then they're developing a hearing aid that's based on that um, that goes down into the ear and then expands out uh, and then has the vibrations in it. Uh, and, and when they were talking to me about it, he, he said he said that, that he had a deaf man crying because he was able to hear things for the first time in yeah. you know ages, um, and I mean yeah, that's that's really cool. They were hoping that that would be um, you know an even better solution than than cochlear implants because those things you have to like actually surgically implant your you know, and you lose all residual hearing in the ear before you put them in. They don't always work. So these are, are actual just hearing aids. You can remove them. You can put them in. Um, but I thought that was that was a fantastic solution. Um, another one. Uh, these are called earbuds. <laughs> y U R. And what they do is they are shaped like ears, so that when you put them in, they they actually seat in your ear, and they don't fall out. And they were designed for joggers, so that so that if you're wearing earbuds and they don't fall out of your ear while you're jogging, um, these are actually really good with noise canceling. I was surprised at the the sound quality. And if they combine this with the cord cruncher, then you know, yeah. <laughs> be onto something there. Um, those, if you Google your bud, Y U R B U D S, I don't think that they're twenty four dollars. <laughs> Did 
They they have uh, it's yeah they're not they're not uh, active noise cancellation. Active noise cancellation has like counter noise going on. Um, these are passive noise cancellation. Um, but but they they yeah they they plug out outside sound pretty well. But they look like they seal tight. Or yeah like yeah because they're they're fitting in your ear and then you yeah, know they've they've got to, on the packaging they say. You know, if this doesn't fit for you, take a picture of your ear and send it to us, and we'll, you know, we'll figure out something that will, because they have different sizes on them. Now, how quickly is some of this stuff going to make it to like Target? Um, I think this is available on the market now. Uh, that's available now. Uh, so some of it is like, you know, I think the smaller things like that are going to be available right away. And then some of them, some of the things that they announced, they were like, you know, it'll be here in the summer. You know, it'll be here sometime this year. Uh, it'll be here when winter, if we ever get funding. <laughs> yeah, you know. I was just looking through earbuds at Target for my son, and this looks like it would be nice. Yeah, yeah. But they, they're expensive, you know, and I'm not getting a $50 pair of earbuds because he goes for three pairs a year. No, I, 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 I hear you, yeah. Um, the... Uh, over the ear headbuds, there were there were they're not earbuds, they're headphones. Um, there were quite a lot of them, and um, it was interesting that they made this transition from originally a couple years ago when they had them. Um, they tended to be very masculine oriented, very very youth culture, very you know giant skulls on the side, and 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 uh, um, they've become more design focused like you know skull candy is probably you know the, the giant skulls and 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 you know i I've, I've got a pair from years ago that you know these are great headphones they've got great sound and they collapse really well but they do have giant skulls on the side and they have even bigger ones with with you know these these giant skulls on the side uh, but uh, last year they introduced a pair that were based on aviator glasses and they looked really cool, like they, you know, came from the future and kind of, kind of metropolis look to them. Um, and they, they, they've uh, introduced a smaller version of that that's clearly aimed at women, you know, and and not just at teenager youth culture kind of thing, but like, you know, women who have money <laughs> and jobs. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And, and I think that was an interesting transition that, that, that a lot of these companies are starting to realize that, you know what, <laughs> women buy things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? We like colors. And we like colors, and it doesn't have to be just pink. <laughs> you know? So I thought it was interesting here, too. I think I've got closer shots here. Okay, so here's a computer case uh, that was designed for cooling without having to use a lot of fans. So they, they just uh, designed this in there so that it conducts airflow through it. Um, I thought that was a... Yeah, yeah, it won an award there. Um, but I thought that was a really clever design and it was nice that it was also aesthetic at the same time. It it's a computer. So it's just a, it's a, just a regular computer, uh, but the case is designed so here's your USB plugs. Um, the case is designed so that the air flows through it so that it doesn't use as much energy keeping it cool. Oh, how big is it? I mean, I That's like a standard tower size. Oh, okay. But I would imagine you could adapt that to smaller sizes too. Does it still have a fan, just not as hefty? I didn't see a fan in it, but maybe it does. Because that would also be really cool in terms of noise. The yeah, yeah, that cuts down on noise, that cuts down on energy. Yeah. You know. I would assume it cuts down on the dust because the fans are what make the inside <coughs> yeah, the, yeah. the dust machine that they run. I, I bet it would too, yeah. The whole premise was to cut the fan out altogether and use the heat sink. Yeah. But, but then there's a redundant backup and everything. You want to stick the fan in there. Well, I, don't think <coughs> I didn't see one, but you know, I, I don't know. Maybe there, maybe there was one yeah, in there somewhere. Either they go that way or I've been waiting for somebody to tr try to incorporate how many of you have your... Oh, and here's, here's their the the handles. Floor, and then you've also got a little floor heater. Come on, people. Like, like That's a good idea. Out. Yeah, you can coordinate those two. Oh, and oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know if it would have enough to do that. So um, in addition to, to, to trackers, so, you know, and they also had trackers that were built into watches. Um, and then this one is a, a watch that runs on Android. Um, I don't know about this particular company. In general, I, I tried to go to their press release, and, and uh, 
at the point that I that I gave up on it, it was because mostly they were just letting the the, the investor <laughs> you know, the speak, and he's all like, you know, I'm great and I have money. <laughs> but uh, uh, they the, need to downsize it a little, I think. Well, it runs apps, so uh, you you have to be able to, to to touch it to to get the apps to run. So there's the flower power that I was talking about that you just plug in, yeah, you know, put that in your garden next to your, next to your uh, plants there. And Does it have an alarm on the app to tell you when it's <laughs> watering? No, I think, I think you just check it. So there's, there's the app that's running. So then you check, you know, how you're doing with the plant. So you, there's a prong one, you buy one that goes into one plant? You know, I wasn't sure if you bought one for each plant or if you just bought one for each garden. Because that would make sense. I know. Yeah. Right, 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 right. No. Yeah, you because, know, well, I, I doubt that you would have to put it on each and every plant, but maybe like one for tomatoes and one for things. But I, I would think that you probably would be able to do just, you know, one for, for here's my sunny garden, here's, here's my shade part, and then, and then call it good. Or maybe it can estimate. Maybe you, you say this is the sunny part, and it estimates how much it's in the shade. That's true. Rabbits well, are not going to eat it. I don't know. Like or turtles. I, I put that in my garden and the apple has to curse at me and go, seriously, are you going to water us ever? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it would have to say, you know, I know it's really hot outside, but <laughs> if you right. want to eat any of these tomatoes, you better go out. Um, yeah, the, well, yeah, there were, there were quite a few people that were interested in it, but also this is the same company that makes the AR drone, AR drone the, the, the Parrot. Uh, parrot it's, a, it's like this big uh, um, helicopter hovery thing uh, with a camera on it that you can control from your iPhone. It's really popular. They, they, they bring it out every year, and everybody always crowds around to see it hovering because it's pretty cool. Now, what but they need they, to do is tie in that sensor that goes in the soil to your sprinkler system and just cut you out. There you that. go. Uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. that, and, and maybe that's what will happen next year. Um, so this is another really cool one. This is uh, um, the Lego Mindstorms 3, um, which uh, I, I don't know if you knew that, that Lego has a robotics kit. Um, you know, my, my, my kids have one. Um, they have the 2.0, so now they're, they're obsolete. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the 3.0 uh, and they're not actually obsolete. They'll still be backward compatible. But but the 3.0 um, has uh, more more programming. It's a um, a uh, Linux based operating system that they advertised the hackability of and said, you know, if you don't like our drag and drop programming interface, program it yourself. We we've uh, just put it we've just put our interface over it, and you can get to it right, right away and and do what you want with it. Um, they have an iPad app that ties into it with, that has instructions for how to build several different robot setups, um, and you can download more from them. So then they had demonstration things. Uh, like one of these, I think, was a little snake. I guess it's over here. It was a snake that had a motion sensor on it, so that if you walk near it, it would snap at you. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, you're going to love that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was just something you could build, like, right the instructions were right there and you could just immediately build it. Um, they had, uh, yeah, there's one that has little How motors and $300. Um, they, they have, uh, um, Lego Education has kits that have with multiple of, of them for, for classroom use. Um, and actually, as it turns out, Lego Education centered out in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Uh, so I, I was thinking we, we ought to see if we could call them up and have them come over and talk to us about Lego Robotics, because that would be really cool. Um, and uh, the programming interface, which you can't see there, is it's, it's drag and drop logic uh, so that you can, you can do it without knowing you know, necessarily a bunch of code. And you can learn <laughs> the concepts of programming before you, before you get to directly typing it out. So that's the pulse socks that I was talking about earlier. That hooks to your iPhone. <laughs> so you know that was that was a, a huge thing to have, but you could just you know have that available at a at a at a clinic that you're just you know mobile. I I don't know that necessarily you'd want to have one in your house. <laughs> I 
I don't know that not everybody would necessarily need one, but maybe if you've got kids or something oh, or yeah. somebody elderly that you're trying yeah. to care for. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, that you've got a specific health condition that you want to monitor at home and then not have to, to go in every time and kind of just, well, I think it looks a little blue, but I don't know. Um, this is the uh, Ford development kit that they send in developers, um, which is a little miniature dashboard. It doesn't come with a microphone. They were just talking. Um, so it, it, the, you can buy a developer kit that has the dashboard um, and then download the, the uh, kit to, to program from your computer and see how it works with their dashboard as you're developing your, your mobile apps so that you can have your phone tell it that you want to play a specific song or, or uh, give you navigation instructions or you know, handle phone calls or, or whatever you want to do. And that, was, that was a big announcement thing. In fact, when they, when they made their press announcement, they didn't talk about their cars at all. They talked about apps. Yeah, that's the, that's the kit. Um, so this is a standalone unit that wouldn't look exactly like what the dashboard would in the car, but it has all the functions so that if you're a programmer, you can see how it's going to react. So then, so then you can say, well, if I tell it to do this, how's it going to react when you're when you're testing it out? And then. So this is more for, not for the regular driver, but. Yeah, and that's not for a regular driver. That's for an app developer, and then that means that means that uh, you don't have to have a whole car, <laughs> you know, in order to test these things. So, yeah, yeah. if you get that, then you can make a fortune on those apps. Right. That's exactly what they're saying is, is come make money off of our apps because if you're making apps that are designed to work with Ford cars, people are going to buy Ford cars because they're designed to work around the apps that they already have. And is the SYNC, S-Y-N-C, is that Ford's? Yeah. I think that that is their name for their, their uh, technology. And so is that technology? Or it might be, actually, it says something about maybe Microsoft, I don't know. Yeah, but they have some connection with Microsoft. I've always wondered what that is, my dear, because I wanted to know if that was Android based. I'm guessing no. <coughs> if it's Microsoft, I'm guessing not. But um, I, I I don't think it was Android based. No, it was their own thing. It wasn't Microsoft based either. Okay, but so maybe that's why they're making a point about come make apps for it. Right, come make apps for it. But you can make Android apps that work with it. And actually, it might have been that they had an Android library and probably an iOS library that extend it so that you're not actually, you know. Cool. And no love for BlackBerry because. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, here, this was kind of cool. That This was over at uh, Texas Instruments Village. Um, that they had a uh, uh, company that was using their technology to make this football uniform for uh, high school students um, that you put that on there and it has sensors in it uh, in the helmet and, and the, the, the body there to sense whether or not you had uh, an, an impact blow and how hard it was mm -hmm. so that you don't have kids saying yeah I can walk it off when they've got a bunch of head injuries you say no this says you've had some serious impacts and you need to go get checked um, so I thought that was a really cool application of the sensors Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not to do it for everybody, yeah. The sensors would then just be built into the way they are. Right, then they're just in. built into the, t into the uniform. So, so, so I think this is like, you know, chest and, and, and everything. So, so you can tell, you know, have you had, had too many head blows? Have you had too many body blows? Yeah, I don't think schools can afford it. It's closed. So. Uh, schools might be able to <laughs> afford it. And schools probably ought to afford it if they want to have insurance. <laughs> So there's your 3D TV uh, that you can't tell is 3D because it's a 2D picture of it. Uh, I don't think it was done any favors by having <laughs> comparison of actual 3D objects in front of it. Um, but uh, yeah, as you walked you know, back and forth, you got this weird like wavy thing going on with it. But if you were just standing absolutely still, it looked pretty good. But if you're sitting off to the left or the right? Is it, left or right was not a problem. It was the moving that was a problem. It don't seem 
Yeah, yeah, because then you get the little weird wavy thing. And and I don't know, maybe maybe you know, as they improve it, they'll be able to get that to go away with the the better resolution because that was the difference between last year and this year. And I swear it didn't do that last year when I saw it. You know, last year I was really impressed with what they had. I'm still waiting for the Jetsons to do. Yeah. If you ever saw that cartoon. What, with the hologram? Yeah. I've seen holograms. Then the problem with holograms is that you have to have cameras projecting to it. And then you have to have like all of your media specially done for that particular technology. Um, this one is a, a solar back battery backup. Uh, so it's got a, a, a larger panel that's probably about the size of that poster there. Um, and then it saves to uh, batteries. They had uh, different devices. This company had uh, um, one that, that was like about the size of a notebook that you expanded out um, that could charge you know, iPads and other smaller devices. And they said that it was about uh, two hours of, of charging time in the sunlight and provided about what, four to eight hours of charge? I'm like, oh, that's not bad. <laughs> you know, what, that's what starting you, to get practical. What are you using the charge for? Uh, well, if you're going camping, if you have unreliable power systems, like say you've been hit by a hurricane, um, and, you know, if you you want to have any sort of battery backup, this is you know, so it's, they've got three plugs there and a bunch of USB ports, so that would charge quite a few devices. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a grid replacement thing yet. Although they they had companies that were that were trying for that, so this and was it's just also a not like the, uh, gasoline powered generator. Uh, yeah. So and they're, they're actually they've got it. They they're telling you that you, you could get your refrigerator to work for twelve hours. So that would be, your power goes out, you save your meat. That's that's not bad. Now this has been out for a while, but I still thought it was a really cool implementation. It's called Rocksmith. Um, and uh, what it is, is it's one of those, those rock band things, but you plug in a real electric guitar. So it's really teaching you how to play the guitar. It's not teaching you how to play a fake plastic guitar that, that doesn't apply. Um, and I, I think this came out like October or something. I don't know, it came, it came out a while ago, so this wasn't a new announcement, but I, I you know, I just like the, the implication to, to, to learning and gaming and that you're finally getting there to get your game to learn real skills. Yeah. It'll actually figure out, no, you're not, you don't have your finger wet to that note. Is that where we went off on? Well, it, if it's, it, you're either playing the note or you're not playing the note, so I mean, you are, your fingers aren't right if you're not, if the note isn't sounding okay. right. So. Yeah, and you plug it in, and it, it detects whether or not you tune the guitar, so it can help you with the tuning. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it detects how well you're doing, so it gives you it gives you tasks based on the skills that you're already demonstrating. Ooh, cool. Which is, I mean, that's that's an important concept in oh, gaming. Yeah. You know, is is that you need to? Uh, yeah, this is like a fifty dollar game, so it's not. Oh really? Yeah. Um, so it's uh, the guitar <laughs> will cost you some money, but well, it's but it, will it take any electricity? Any electric guitar that you can plug into that. One there you go, Rocksmith. Xbox, PlayStation, or uh, um, PC. You have to buy it online or like GameStop? Or GameStop would have it, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, yeah and it's already out, so yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, so, so uh, the, the concept of, of incrementing the difficulty as you go, that's, uh, you know, uh, that's the reason why really engaging games are really engaging is because they can do that. You know, if Tetris did not speed up as you went, then you would be very bored with it, <laughs> even though it's unwinnable. So other things to watch. Um, lots of watches that geolocate, that know where you are. Um, there, was, there was one that uh, they were trying to launch that was designed around uh, children and adults with Alzheimer's, if in case they ran away, that you'd be able to, to track them. And it was a watch that actually had a cell phone embedded in it, so it, it, it geolocated and took incoming calls. It didn't make outgoing calls, but you could set up up to five numbers in advance so that the first thing, if somebody runs away then you know, or is lost, 
uh, then, then, you can, then you can call them and say, where are you? And they would know it was from, from a friendly source. Now that presumes that they're wearing the watch and that they don't know to, to defeat it because, you know, nothing's, <laughs> nothing's going to keep everybody in for, but if, it, if you've got a case of somebody who's just getting lost or wandering as opposed to deliberately running away. Um, then there were also luggage tags that geolocated. Uh, so you put the luggage tags, I'm, I'm assuming you put it actually inside your, your luggage and not as a tag on the outside. And what it did was it texted you when it arrived at the airport and told you which airport it arrived at. So if it arrived at the wrong airport, you would be able to say, well, my luggage didn't arrive, it's over here, and be able to find it a lot faster. Um, then, and I've had that happen actually. <laughs> my luggage did not, did not make it back with me. Uh, the cars that also geolocate and tell you how well you're driving. Um, medications that tell you whether or not you're taking them or whether or not your child is taking them um, included things like you know pill cases but also uh, asthma inhal inhalers that had a a case that specifically monitored whether or not it was being used and that way you could monitor you know maintenance use of, of uh, asthma medication um, you, you're sending your child to school and you're trusting that the school is, is doing this now you know um, waterproof phones just about every company that announced a phone announced that it was also waterproof. They, they've developed the, you know, or water resistant, I guess. <coughs> but they've developed the technology to the point now uh, that if you dunk it in water, it's probably gonna survive. Cool. And next year, they'll be dropping it down the stairs, survival. Yeah, that's yeah. what we Oh, they had, they, they had quite a few cases that, that advertised that. Um, one company, and. Um, Newer tech had a had a case that unless it landed on the screen side, well, yeah, <laughs> in which case you're kind of kind of out of luck. But if it landed on the back side, it had like this gel cushioning, like from insoles. Um, they they demonstrated by throwing it on, throwing it off of a crane, and it chunk, and it landed, and it was fine. The silicon. Yeah, no, it was it was a, a gel cushioning on it on the wow. insides instead of just silicon. But so it's a lot of cool stuff. Any, any questions? Because I've been talking for an hour.